In the last question in the quiz, we needed to work out the number of seconds in a year and do it formally. I'll write one year equals 365.24 days, then I can multiply both sides of that equation by one without changing it. The one that I use is 24 hours divided by one day, which will cancel the days. Then 3,600 seconds over an hour to cancel the hours. Then the calculator tells me the number of seconds in an average year, leap seconds not included. So now I can convert 14 billion years, again multiplying by one. Here's something important. My calculator gave me lots of digits, but I didn't write them all down. We started with the value 14 billion years. I know that this value is not exact because it only has two digits. We say that 14 has two significant figures. So here I take 14 to mean somewhere between 13.5 and 14.5. In other words, there is an implied error of up to 0.5 over 14 or a few percent. So when I give my answer, I also give that to two significant figures, 4.4 times 10 to the 17 seconds. Note, the number of significant figures is not the number of decimal places. It's the total number of digits in scientific notation. If a cosmologist said 13.8 billion years, then I'd have three significant figures and an implied error of a fraction of a percent. My calculator gives me a new long number, but I keep only the first three. Round up, I get 4.35 by 10 to the 17 seconds. The difference is important because that last digit is significant. It gives me an idea of the precision of the value. We'll do more examples of significant figures as we go, and we'll expect you to be careful with them when doing problems. By the way, you might want to remember that a year is roughly 30 million seconds. 30 million of these, don't waste them. So we've introduced the standard unit of time and also how we measure it. We measure ratios. A year is about 30 million times longer than these ticks. Scientists use the units of the Système International. For length, we use the metre, this long. And again, we measure by ratios and counting. When I say that this bench is 0.93 metres high, I'm giving you a ratio. Though I'm more likely to say 930 millimetres, which introduces one of the standard prefixes, milli meaning one thousandth. Well, you've now met the units for speed in the Système International, metres per second. The metre per second is a nice human scale unit. You can walk at a couple of metres per second. But you probably know another unit for speed, kilometres per hour. New units, kilo is a prefix for a thousand, so a kilometre is a thousand metres. And an hour is 3,600 seconds. Well, easy to convert. Multiplying by one again, one metre per second equals 3.6 kilometres per hour exactly. We'll use real world examples in this course, and here's a preview of one of them. The world record for a car powered by the sun alone, no batteries, is 88.7 kilometres per hour, set by this car, built and raced by UNSW students. Americans use miles, so let's convert. A land mile is defined as 1.60934 kilometres, which I'll rearrange to get one. Again, why didn't I write down all the figures on my calculator? Yes, significant figures. This answer would be misleading. It implies a precision that the original value doesn't have. <laughs> and this one is just wrong. A speed cannot equal a number. But note that metres per second or miles per hour or kilometres per hour all have what we call the dimensions of distance over time. Dimensions in units are important. You can't measure distance in kilograms or force in seconds. So you'll have to be careful with units and with significant figures because we'll be checking. There's a complication with significant figures when we do subtraction. Let's suppose I have a metal bar that is 300.0 millimetres long, I heat it over a flame and it expands. 
Suppose its new length is 300.3 millimetres. By how much has it expanded? Well, our original data were accurate to about 0.1 millimetre, and our result cannot be more accurate than this. It's also accurate to about 0.1 millimetre. So in this subtraction, we've actually lost significant figures. We started with four and end up with just one. The increase in proportional error produced by subtraction is often a problem in experimental data and in calculations. You'll probably run into it in your first experimental investigation. Haha, <laughs> you've thought of that already, have you? Well, then you're ready for another quiz. But remember, you can come back to look at this video again if you need it.